Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover what the difference is between 5 divided by 500 and 500 divided by 5. No, they are not the same thing, and no, they both don't equal 100. So let's jump into it here, and we'll start with number 1, where we have 5 divided by 500. And the first thing I want to mention, when it comes to division, don't worry about which number is smaller in value or larger in value when it comes to setting up a division problem. So let's set this problem up. We have 5 divided by 500. So 5 is what we call our dividend. It's what's being split or divided up, and it goes under our division bar. So 5 divided by 500. Now 500 is what we call our divisor. It's what we're dividing by. So let's put that on the outside. Now that problem may look a little off or incorrect, but it actually is set up correctly. So let's think about this situation. 5 divided by 500. So we're starting with 5 holes and splitting those 5 holes into 500 equal groups. So our answer is going to be less than a whole. So let's go through the process of solving this and we'll see what the difference is between our answers between 5 divided by 500 and 500 divided by 5. So we'll go through our division process and our first step is divide. So 5 divided by 500. How many whole groups of 500 can we pull out of 5? Well, we can't do that. So let's put a 0. Multiply. 0 times 500 is 0. Subtract, we get 5. And now we bring down. But we don't have anything to bring down in order to continue through our process. So what we do, we place a decimal after the 5. That does not change the value of that 5. We can place a decimal after a whole number without changing the value. And what we'll do, we'll place a zero in the tenths place. Again, we're not changing the value of the five or the problem overall. Now we have something to bring down. But before we move on, bring that decimal straight up. That will place it correctly in our answer. So let's bring down our zero. And we have 50 divided by 500. How many whole groups of 500 can we pull out of 50? Well, we can't, so we need another zero. Let me extend this here. So we have 0 times 500, which is 0. Subtract. 50 minus 0 is 50. So we're still not done yet. So what we can do, we can use another placeholder 0 in the hundredths place. Again, still not changing the value of anything. So we can do that. Now let's bring that 0 down. And we have 500 divided by 500. So how many whole groups of 500 out of 500? Well, 1. 1 times 500 is 500. Subtract, and we get 0. So our answer is 1 hundredth. So let's compare that to number 2, where we have 500 divided by 5. So 500 is our dividend. 500 divided by 5 divided by our divisor of 5. So see the difference between the two problems? Don't worry about, again, which number is smaller or larger in value. Worry about the order of that problem and what the problem means. So now let's go through our steps. So 5 divided by 5, which is 1. 1 times 5 is 5. Subtract, we get 0. Bring down our 0. How many whole groups of 5 out of 0? Well, 0. 0 times 5 is 0. Subtract, we get 0. Bring down our 0. So how many whole groups of 5 out of 0? Again, 0. 0 times 5 is 0. Subtract, and we get 0. So we are done. And that problem you may have done, um, been able to do using mental math, but I wanted to write it out as well. So number 2 equals 100. So there you have it. There's the difference between 5 divided by 500 and 500 divided by 5. So order matters in division, not which number is larger or smaller in value. So be careful with how you set up division problems.
I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.